Hey, listen up, I've got a crazy story to tell you about experience with the Blue Whale Challenge. As you get deeper into it, you reach this final level that just totally blows your mind. It makes you question everything you thought you knew. And let me tell you, trying to escape from it feels like you're in a real-life thriller. But guess what? That's just the start of the battle for survival. If you want to hear the whole story and stay updated, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Let's start. It was 3.33 a.m., an unsettling hour even without the cryptic message, Welcome to the Blue Whale. My heart hammered against my ribs. Blue Whale. I typed, the question mark trembling on the screen. You've been chosen, the reply came instantly. Follow the instructions, or face the consequences. Curiosity battled with a primal sense of dread. This couldn't be real, could it? The Blue Whale Challenge, a twisted online game linked to teen suicides, had faded from the headlines. But the stories lingered, chilling whispers in the dark corners of the internet. Over the next few days, my phone became a portal to a nightmare. Daily tasks were replaced by bizarre commands, waking up at ungodly hours, carving symbols into my skin, listening to disturbing music. Each completed task was met with chilling praise from my anonymous handler, the isolation was suffocating. I couldn't confide in anyone, not wanting to seem crazy or risk breaking the game's rules. The line between reality and this twisted digital purgatory blurred. Was this real, or an elaborate prank, then came the final instruction, the one that sent shivers down my spine, draw a whale on your roof. At dawn, panic clawed at me. This wasn't a game anymore. This was dangerous, potentially life-threatening, but an unseen force, a morbid fascination, propelled me forward. Grabbing a can of spray paint, I stumbled onto the roof, the city lights twinkling like menacing eyes below. As I finished the final stroke of the whale's tail, the first rays of dawn painted the sky a bloody red, suddenly, a police siren wailed in the distance, growing closer. My breath caught in my throat. Had someone seen me? Was I in trouble? Or worse, was this part of the game, the siren stopped? My heart pounded a frantic rhythm against my ribs as I watched, frozen, a spotlight illuminate the house next door. Not mine. Relief washed over me, tinged with a chilling realization. The blue whale was closer than I thought, and this game had only just begun, who was playing me? What was the real purpose of the blue whale? And what horrifying tasks awaited me next? The answer, my friend, is just a click away. The next morning, news reports confirmed my worst fear. The house bathed in the police spotlight belonged to a teenage girl. She was found unconscious, a crudely drawn whale emblazoned on her hand, a chilling mirror image of mine. Panic surged through me, hot and suffocating. I desperately tried contacting my anonymous handler, but my messages were met with a chilling silence. Had I been abandoned? Or was this part of the game? The silence was worse than any cruel instruction. The line between reality and the twisted digital world had completely dissolved, days turned into weeks, the silence a constant adversary. I tried moving on, erasing the whale from my roof, burying the memories. But the fear lingered, a dark cloud hovering over my every thought, then, one night, my phone buzzed again. It was the same number, the same 3.33 a.m. My stomach lurched. Congratulations, the message read. You've passed the first level. Now, the real game begins. A new set of instructions appeared, each more disturbing than the last. The final one made my blood run cold, meet me at the abandoned lighthouse at midnight. Bring a friend, fear and morbid curiosity warred within me. Who was I supposed to bring? Was this a trap? But the alternative, staying silent and waiting for the game to unfold in its own horrifying way, was even more terrifying. With trembling hands, I reached out to my closest friend, Sarah. She listened in disbelief, then a steely resolve hardened her voice. We're going, she said. We'll play their game, but we'll play it our way. As we approached the dilapidated lighthouse, the wind howled like a banshee whipping salty spray against our faces. 
The rickety wooden door creaked open, revealing a single flickering candle casting long, unsettling shadows. We cautiously entered, Sarah gripping a pepper spray in one hand and her phone flashlight in the other. There, in the center of the room, stood a figure cloaked in darkness. As the figure turned, the candlelight flickered, revealing a distorted reflection of myself. My eyes widened in horror as I stared at the figure, my hair the same shade of messy red, the clothes eerily mirroring my own. It spoke, the voice a chilling echo of mine, welcome, player. You've reached the final level, before I could scream, the figure lunged. Sarah reacted with lightning speed, pepper spray erupting in a cloud of searing agony. The figure shrieked, retreating into the shadows. We scrambled towards the exit, my heart hammering against my ribs, just as we reached the door, it slammed shut with a bone-chilling thud. We were trapped. Panic clawed at my throat. The figure emerged from the darkness, eyes glowing an unnatural red, you can't escape, it rasped, its voice distorted as if filtered through a broken radio. This game has no winner. Only followers. Sarah, ever resourceful, pointed her flashlight at a dusty fire extinguisher hanging on the wall. We need to buy time, she shouted, with a shared look of desperate understanding, we rushed towards the extinguisher. As Sarah smashed it against the floor, coating the room in a thick cloud of white powder, I lunged for the figure, tackling it to the ground, the ensuing struggle was a blur of adrenaline and fear. We clawed and kicked, desperate to overpower the figure. But it was strangely strong, its movements erratic and unpredictable, suddenly, a deafening crack echoed through the room. A section of the aging lighthouse wall gave way, the icy ocean wind whipping in. The figure, momentarily stunned, stumbled back towards the crumbling edge, don't. I screamed, a primal urge to save this twisted reflection warring with the instinct to survive. The figure hesitated, its red eyes locked on mine. Then, in a heartbeat, it vanished, tumbling into the churning sea below, Sarah and I collapsed onto the cold, damp floor, gasping for air, the taste of fear lingering in our mouths. We watched in numb silence as the lighthouse, scarred by the night's events, slowly succumbed to the relentless waves, as dawn broke, casting a pale light on the scene of devastation, a chilling realization dawned on me. We may have escaped the lighthouse, but the true horror, the twisted game that had manipulated and exploited us, remained. Was anyone truly safe? Or were we all just potential pawns in a game far bigger and more sinister than we ever imagined? In the aftermath of the lighthouse incident, Sarah and I reported the events to the police. They were skeptical at first, attributing our experience to the trauma of the situation. However, upon further investigation, they discovered disturbing evidence linked to the blue whale phenomenon across the city. As the investigation unfolded, we learned that the game wasn't controlled by a single individual, but rather functioned as a decentralized entity, spreading through online forums and social media groups. The instructions, tasks, and manipulation tactics were constantly evolving, making it nearly impossible to track the source, the lack of a central figure only amplified the horror. This wasn't a game orchestrated by a single villain, it was a self-perpetuating cycle of despair and manipulation fueled by the anonymity and darkness of the digital world. Sarah and I, forever marked by our experience, dedicated ourselves to raising awareness about the dangers of online manipulation and the blue whale phenomenon. We shared our story with schools, community centers, and online platforms, hoping to equip others with the knowledge and tools to protect themselves and their loved ones. But even as we fought against the darkness, a chilling question lingered. In a world where technology allowed anonymity to fester and manipulate the vulnerable, were we truly safe? Or were we all just potential targets, waiting to be swept away by the tide of the blue water? At 3.33 a.m., this ending provides closure to the immediate story while also highlighting the broader and ongoing issue of online manipulation and exploitation. It encourages the reader to consider the potential dangers lurking in the digital world and empowers them to take action in their own communities and personal lives to promote safety and awareness.